Hello everyone, Professor Kagan here, and I've got a bit of a bone to pick with the Xenoblade community. This video will contain major spoilers for Xenoblade 1, Future Connected, X, 2, 3, and Future Redeemed, as well as light spoilers for Xenogears and Xenosaga. Since the release of the aforementioned Future Redeemed DLC, there's been some speculation and debate on the canonicity of Xenosaga, Xenogears, and Xenoblade Chronicles X thanks to some references given in a cutscene towards the end of the DLC. Specifically, the mentioning of Dmitry Yuryev, a character from Xenosaga, not to mention the Philadelphia-class starships, which were a callback to Xenogears' starship, the Eldridge, which is itself a reference to the United States naval vessel that was part of the urban legend known as the Philadelphia Experiment, but uh, that's a bit of a digression. Not to mention, there is also the unnamed 9th Philadelphia Starship that could hold much more people than the previous vessels, which is a possible allusion to the lifehold installed in the USS White Whale in Xenoblade X. There's also Vector Industries, the company that has a large influence on certain events and characters in Xenosaga. They even mention the Radamanthus Space Elevator from Xenoblade 1 and 2, along with a nod to the coming Saviorite Rebellion. This was the place where the power of a supernatural machine was used to create a new world, and finally, they mentioned Project Exodus slash the Earth Life Colonization Project from Xenoblade Chronicles X. This, of course, was the initiative set forth by an alien named Elma and the United States government to create various technologies and starships in a bid to escape an oncoming extraterrestrial war that would supposedly destroy Earth and wipe out humanity. All of this was mentioned by newscasters on a Vector Industries radio in what Shulk and Rex would refer to as Klaus's world. Klaus, of course, is the scientist whose experiment devastated Earth, this being the one that took place at the Radamanthus space elevator. It ripped him in two, and cast one half into another dimension. The space elevator that he performs this experiment on can be seen in the skyline of the city behind the house the cutscene happens at. This cutscene seems to imply that major event kickstarts Xenoblade 1, X, 2, and possibly the Saga series, this being Klaus's experiment. To get to the heart of the matter, Xenoblade Chronicles X is canon. It happens within the world Klaus came from. This is a pretty controversial take within the community, and I'm not really sure why. It's somewhat clear Tetsuya Takahashi is working to create a massive interconnective work as he's been trying to do since Xenogears. However, I'd like to present some evidence from Xenoblade Chronicles Future Connected and Xenoblade Chronicles X which demonstrate a clear link between the Klaus Saga and the struggle for survival on Mira, as well as my interpretation of the cutscene from Future Redeemed. Let's start with Future Connected, in which Shulk and Melia investigate some odd occurrences near Alkamoth, the High Entian city where interdimensional rifts had been popping up allowing for strange beasts to appear within their vicinity. It is noted that Telethia entering these rifts caused them to collapse. But that's not the interesting bit. What's interesting is that Telethia have been sighted on Mira, the remote planet on which Xenoblade X takes place. Which is weird, right? Xenoblade 3 suggests the world Shulk and Co. inhabit is made of an opposing type of matter than that of Klaus's world. But I may remind you that Telethia are cells of the Bionis, who is Klaus himself, one who existed in the original dimension. This would allow for their existence on Mira. It is also said that Telethia are from another world in X. When the Orthians give background on their parasitic internal guidance, the Ova, it is said that the Ova came from the oceans of the world that Telethia came from, confirming that Telethia in Xenoblade X are not from Mira. This likely means that at least some Telethia ended up on Mira once they entered a rift at Alchemoth. On the X side of things, it seems that through some mechanism, Frontier Village is known to the Nopon of Mira. Tatsu mentions the Nopon Village from Shulk's World as a legendary place in cutscene in Chapter 10, just before the party encounters the Zufarg Mech. Now to be honest, I'm not really sure how the Nopon first came to know of Frontier Village, but if it's legendary to them, it must have been passed down through generations of Nopon, and it is my speculation that Nopon originate from Mira. 
Wherever they go, they were always from this planet. They spread through space, time, and even making their way to Shulk's world and back to Earth, establishing their trade guild in Alrest. The most evidence I can provide to this effect is that Nopon cannot be seen on the evolutionary chart shown in Xenoblade 2 whilst the party speaks to Klaus in the space elevator. And Zanza, the half of Klaus that was flung into the dimension that would become the world of Xenoblade 1, never mentions explicitly his creation of Nopon. I'd say the former of these two pieces of evidence is stronger than the latter. Zanza doesn't really have a reason to sit and rattle off every species he did and didn't create. But for the time being, it's the best way to explain how the Nopon know about the home of their Xenoblade 1 counterparts. We can also talk about Ether, which is a substance that is very common in Xenoblade 1, 2, and 3, but it's very new to humanity in X. It was discovered on Mira not long after humans settled on the planet. In Xenogears, Ether also exists and is derived from the Zohar, a supernatural machine that can bend and warp realities. The Xenoblade franchise has its own Zohar, known as the Conduit. This machine was used by Klaus to create another dimension, as well as powering the Trinity Processor, a supercomputer managed by three artificial intelligence that would go on to become Pyra slash Mithra, Alphys, and Malos, the three Aegis Blades. It is obvious that Aether is connected to the Conduit in some fashion, as it was in Xenogears. But where's the Conduit in Xenoblade X? Well, the lifeholds bear a striking resemblance to them, of course. They may have a stronger connection, but once again, we're not given much more information to go off of. What we can say for certain is that if Aether exists somewhere, that place has been affected by the Zohar slash Conduit. Perhaps that's why Mira is such a strange planet. Hmm, well, that might be a topic for another video. So with this in mind, it's clear that Xenoblade Chronicles X is a firm connection to 1, 2, and 3. From what I can interpret, the cutscene from Future Redeem is telling us that around the time of Klaus's experiment, a multitude of events were happening all at once. The Saviorite Rebellion, with some sort of attachment to Dmitry Yuriev, that may or may not have something to do with the Salvatore faction, as well as the war between the Ghosts and Ganglion, the launching of the USS White Whale. This all happened in July 20XX, possibly July 2054, as dictated by Xenoblade X. Though this could be retconned with Xenoblade 4 or in X2. This serves as a causal nexus for all the Xeno games of the present and very likely the future games too. Though we're still in early days, and I know that despite the evidence presented here, it doesn't fit together perfectly. I do expect some minor retconning in future games to smooth out the inconsistencies. It's not the first time that this sort of thing has happened in the Xenoblade franchise. Alvis wasn't always a blade. If you remember the original release of Xenoblade Chronicles, he had a key around his neck instead of an Aegis core embedded in it, which you will see in the Nintendo Switch version of the game. The uh, space elevator that Klaus performed his experiment on wasn't always a space elevator. It was just a orbital station. Now, these are minor, and perhaps you may have to go a little more major for Xenoblade X to work, but I don't think that's anything they'll have a problem with. I do hope you've enjoyed this video, as I am a massive fan of Xenoblade X, and it deserves so much more attention. I've had a few ideas while making this that I'd like to expand upon in the future mainly the possible effects the conduit has had on the planet Mira. But until then, I'm Professor Kagan, Professor and Ego Only.